again, ninth frame strike, an ideal position. So just 10 pins the difference. Both working on strikes, both going into the 10th frame. Couldn't be much closer. Four more then. Has to have strikes here. Vitally important that uh, he puts a decent run off the card. Well, the thing is, if one of these bowlers can strike and go through 220 and the other not, there could be a, a difference of uh, 30 or 40 pins. And was the first one. Great work. Well, I'll stand by it, Cass. I still think the man that gets a turkey is going to be the man that probably takes this one out. You're not sitting on the fence, are you? Paul's working on a double. and He's got a chance to make a turkey, so... <laughs> we know where your money's going, Simon. You just can't bet against a man that's made three finals in a row. And I know that this format is uh, really tough to cope with. I know that it's a lottery for some players. Belmonte, the defending champion, in command last year, gone in the first round. I know all those facts, but Paul Moore has only lost three times on this lane. A little bit shaky at the line, but he's got it away. And that's exactly what I was talking about. He's going to make uh, 60 pins here in the last two frames, simply because he's struck in ninth and then two in ten. And he's going to be 220 plus. It's going to be a good, reasonable score. Yeah, Roger's got his game face on now. Well, it's down to the wire, isn't it? Uh, that's exactly the right place you need to get strikes. If you've been struggling, if you can, you can come out frames nine and ten with uh, four strikes. It makes such a big difference. Uh, he wasn't happy with that, but he's got the luck. All sorts of action on the pins there for Paul Moore. And I think this lane knows that he's back in town. 2.28 then in that first game for Paul Moore. And he's rescued a pretty tenuous position. Alex actually has to do exactly the same thing. He needs to go out with uh, another three strikes here just to stay in touch. If he doesn't, as I say, he could be uh, 30 pins adrift from a game that's been pretty neck and neck all the way through. New then finally has a bit of pressure being put on him by Paul Moore. He has to strike off the card to stay in contention. No, he's left a bucket. Our first one this year. Yeah, it's the three, four, five, and the nine pin. That was actually a bad shot. Now I don't know if you can see. He doesn't get any fingers in this ball at all. That goes flat, and is not going to hook at all. Just makes the head pin. Consequently, no drive through the pins, leaving four standing. Really must spare here. And that's a pressure ball, and he's made the spare. Just going to stay in touch. Maximum score of 198. So he's going to be 30 pins adrift. And uh, one game against Paul Moore, 30 pins down. There's no easy task to pull back. We'll be asking a lot. And that's simply down to Moore finishing uh, with those four strikes. It was a great finish. Smooth from Alex Liu, and it is smooth. Well, he's found a delivery that's kept him in contention, but it's not going to be easy for Alex Liu from here on in. 2.28 to Paul Moore, and that is a commanding lead over Alex Liu of Malaysia. Back to the Metrodome for the PartyCasino.com World 10-Pin Masters. Paul Moore is out on the lane, still chasing the dream that has eluded him for the last three years. Three times he's been runner-up at the Masters, but each year he returns stronger and more determined to succeed. Well, there's no doubt that Moore was handed one of the tougher first-round draws in this year's competition. He's up against the man from Malaysia, the Asian number one, Alex Liu. But at the halfway stage, the Yorkshireman is more than holding his own. This one could go either way. Liu is in incredible form at the moment, but with both players matching each other frame for frame here, it's so tight, and Moore has just edged into the lead. Time now to rejoin our commentary team at the start of Game 2. Cass Edwards and Simon Golding. Well, we've had some interesting situations in this match so far. Alex Liu of Malaysia has 
bowled well but he's just been a little suspect with his line was uh, too straight on occasions and that's cost him strikes and he knows it and he's trying to finesse his way back into this match against England's Paul Moore but the three-time runner-up at the World Tempin Masters has got a 30-pin lead and Paul Moore if he can keep responding to shots like that from Alex Yu should be home and dry in this one but uh, this is far from over a better shot uh, from Alex he quite enjoyed that one he, I think he realised the mistake he made on that uh, first shot in the 10th frame just didn't get anything on the ball at all no fingers in it as we say in the trade didn't get any lift and consequently no rotation Paul Moore great work from him four bagger to finish off in the first game still going to maintain Cass that that might be the break that wins this match <clears throat> there's a very good chance yes I, I, I've sort of stressed how important it was those that ninth and tenth frame for Paul Moore and uh, you could well be right he's, he's on a bit of a roll now so that's five strikes in a row you know, he's gaining in confidence and that line is really working for him now he's carrying those corner pins consistently and that really has been the difference in this game between the two players Clear. very cautious approach from this man it's not aggressive at all and he doesn't get a tremendous amount of power in well he's totally missed his pocket he's gone Brooklyn on that one and he shaved that pocket on the other side yeah not an ideal shot this uh, ball has gone with the shoulder he's pulled it to the right misses Mark totally on the inside and of course it's uh, he's put it down early it's found some friction and turn right missed the head pin Needs to make a spare and does. And he realizes that was not a good shot. And it looks as though he may be going over to uh, find another bowling ball of his and give that an outing because he has to do some work in this uh, last eight frames. He's got pins to catch back and his game is just not working. A rather world weary Alex Liu plods back to his seat. And looks like it might just be a, a bit of finger tape that he's going to use to make an adjustment maybe to the grip. Paul Moore, though, in control now of this match. He's bowled extremely well. Had a bit of luck over the last five frames, but he's still been solid. This is more like uh, what we're used to seeing from Paul Moore. And he's piling it on now. He's taken some pace off, hasn't he, Cass? And he's just found his line. Absolutely, yeah. He's getting some fantastic rotation in the back end. He's... He's stuck with the line that he started with, and now it's paying dividends. He's made a slight adjustment on the speed, and it's now carrying all ten. So he shoots five strikes in a row, and um, his game is really here. Of course, if he goes on to win, he could have a fascinating quarter quarter-final match between the winner of uh, Dominic Barrett of England and. Uh, Bibo Rivera from the Philippines. Uh, that uh, promises to be a rather exciting first round match that's uh, coming up next. That's the thing about this tournament. It starts well and builds. Oh dear. Well, oh, Alex just has just lost the line completely. Oh, this is just not him. This is just not Alex Liu. He, he never bowls like this under these sort of conditions. Yeah, his ball's starting to bite up too early now. It would appear that uh, there's been change in the old pattern it's affected his game more than it's affected Paul Moore's and uh, the last two shots he's been right out the pocket so he's under pressure he's had an open frame and he's going to be wondering whether he's going to be possibly taking that early flight back to the Far East but he'll have some company with Jason Belmonte who uh, unfortunately also went out in the first round uh, it's a tough call for these guys that are flying in from uh the Pacific Rim countries and in they come and your tournament could be over in the space of 45 minutes and you'll be back on the plane but they love coming to play here and they're willing to do that willing to take that risk for Paul Moore though it's uh, a few miles drive from his home in Beverly and I think it uh, it pays dividends for him 
There's just something about being close to home in these big tournaments. The, uh, a lot of professional sportsmen will tell you that. Some of the home comforts, having some of your mates around as well, watching you play, it all, all makes things seem very normal. Paul really got some fingers in that ball and uh, drilled it into the lane. Great reaction in the back end yet again. Bit funny how it goes from uh, within within five or ten minutes. He's gone from struggling to just ripping the rack all the time. Striking at will almost now. Once again, just a nine. And uh, there's a, a look of defeat in his face. Well, these guys know what's happening out there. They're, they're all realists when it comes to the results. And Liu knows he's potentially gone in this tournament and the problem is that he's up against a man that he's just locked into this lane now Paul Moore working a turkey looking to make it four strikes in a row Alex Liu can't find a strike no that's right Alex hasn't uh, thrown two together at all in the match and Paul finished with four and he started with three so he's actually hit seven in a row not that it counts as seven but uh, it's just an interesting statistic as you say, Simon, he's uh, really got locked in now. And uh, it could be he's going to might be taking this home, lane home tonight. Yeah, this is good. This is good from Paul Mark. Yeah, it doesn't seem to, to be any, any change in the lane condition that's affected Paul. He's stayed pretty much in that area for the whole of the... Uh, game and a half that he's played so he hasn't varied very much at all he's just uh, stepped up his game in the last five or six frames and now it's paying dividends huge delivery for Alex Liu this is pretty much his tournament right here oh he's fighting but it's the corner pins again that are causing the problems yeah these are brand new pins made by our friends at Brunswick, Brunswick Max Pins, three pounds, uh, ten ounces, as used on the professional tour, and uh, sometimes if you don't hit them right, they look like solid oaks, they just don't want to move. Yeah, a little uh, applause to the crowd there from Alex Liu, kind of acknowledging that he knows the, uh, the game's up. Oh, well. Not this year for Alex Liu of Malaysia. I know it's a long way out to be talking like that, but Paul Moore looks in uh, irresistible form once again. Yeah, Paul's just going to have to keep the ball on the lane now, keep it in play. Can afford a few spares, can't afford any open frames, but uh, the way he's striking at the moment, another couple of those, and uh, it's a good night at Vienna for the man from Kuala Lumpur. And at the same time, Simon, of course, he's sending out a message to other opponents that are looking on. I'm back. Roger's back, perhaps. That's it, yeah. Don't believe anything you've read in the press over the last year about this man's results. When it comes to the World Tempin Masters, it's a different ball game. Five bagger for Paul Moore to kick things off in this second game. Yeah, he's looking quite relaxed now, and he'll be very confident that, uh, you know, he's just going to step up and, and can bury it in the pocket and carry so, um, as I say, looking relaxed, he will f be feeling great. I'm thinking, well, I'm going forward to the uh, quarterfinals. Yeah, well done, Alex. <laughs> Finally. He's got one on the board. Yeah, hits him thin, makes some spin, jumps them all around. Oh, look of resignation on his face. Nice smooth delivery, though. Steady at the line on that one foot. Nicely balanced. Ah, good looking strike. Yeah, not a pleasant seat to be sitting in when you're this far down. Up there on the stage. Well, Alex Liu has at least got a strike under his belt. Can he build on that and can pull more? More importantly, make this a six bagger. No, he can't. And in the oh well, in the most emphatic of fashions, I was about to say because that split.
could have been a potential open frame, but it won't be now if he can take out that 10. Yeah, just a, a, a little chuckle on his face there. He was looking at the 7-10 split, wasn't he? Simply because he hit this so hard in that pocket. Oh, when a little messenger just gives that uh, seven pin a tap and takes it away. Turns it from a uh, potential open frame into a reasonably easy spear. Ten pin in the corner, he'll just straighten this one out and progress. Some of the great thing about this tournament is that all 16 bowlers are world champions. They're greatest bowlers that, that we can find to bring to this tournament and unfortunately half of them have to go home after just two games no matter how good they are what what uh, their credentials are makes it such a fascinating tournament this year working a strike and looking to try and exert some sort of pressure on paul moore oh well that'll do it's all he can do but at least it's something from Alex. Yes, in a normal tournament, Alex would say, well, um, look out because I'm coming back in the next game. Unfortunately, at the World Champion Masters, there is no other game to come back to. This is it. Two games, and we're down to the last three frames. Yeah, call it what you want, short and sweet, fast and furious. It is all over in the blink of an eye, and you've got to nail it from frame one. I think if Alex had maybe found that run of strikes as early as frame three or four, then he would have been thinking his chances were still there. But Paul Moore missed out on his six-bagger. Gets straight back in the pocket, though. And again, every time he's going to learn a lot from this cast. Every time he's taken the pace off and he's let the ball do the work, he's got the result. Yeah, well spotted, Simon. That's uh, perfectly correct. And he is looking good now. He'll be very relaxed. He knows he's got this lane beaten for this match. And it will give him a great deal of confidence going into his quarter-final, whoever he'll be playing. Alex, unfortunately, well, you can see the difference there in the uh, scores on the screen. And 70 pins adrift now. It's gone wide again. Ooh, got the reaction, came back and hit the head pin, but uh, quite, can't quite push that 10 pin away. He was just looking for a slight variation there. See what reaction he would get. Unfortunately, I think it's all just a little bit too late. Which is a classic style he's got. Just didn't quite make the pocket. Yeah, he's a great bowler to watch, Alex. Here. And we have had some of the greats competing at the World Tempin Masters over the years. Started way back in 98, Torrey Torgerson, three-time winner in the end of this competition, took the first ever title. And then uh, Peng Nepomuceno of the Philippines took the title the next year. And when you're talking about Tempin legends, that man is. Paul Moore looking to join the ranks of the winners. Had three attempts so far and has missed out. Well, that's his first iffy ball this game. Yeah, maybe just uh, slightly overcooked it. He's uh, relaxed. The pressure's off of him now. Left himself the uh, three and the nine pin sleeper. One pin right in front of the other. It's a tricky little spare, but uh, there's no reason why he shouldn't make this and uh, just stay clean in this game. Just going through the motions now. Frame number eight. Nice smooth start and nice smooth spare. Yes, yeah, good work from Rog. Three time European number one. Very proud of that fact as well. He realises what incredible competition he's up against to claim that top spot. It's not a maximum that he would have looked for, but it's going to be good enough. Alex Liu looking to entertain this Barnsley crowd from here on in. It strikes they want and it strikes they've got. <clears throat> a change of ball and a change of reaction carries all ten. An act of frustration really, just searching for something. Get another ball out of the bag and it can't do any worse than the last one. And uh, He's ripped the rack and carried ten in the uh, foundation frame.
Well, this is where Paul Moore turned the afterburners on in game one. Foundation frame onwards, he was all the way through with strikes, and that's what took the match away from Alex Liu. Strike again. And I think Paul Moore's going to come away from this match, Cass, with uh, a lot of very valuable information. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, he's, uh, he's had a testing time uh, this year in tournaments around the world. And he's back on home turf and uh, well, he's uh, brought his A, a game with him. And it's, uh, it's given him the results that he's looking for. And he thinks, well, if I can go on and build from here, who's going to stop me? And that's not a flippant statement, is it? No, not at all. He's proved himself time and time again on this lane. As has Alex Liu, as a matter of fact. And he's turning on a decent display to finish things off. He will once again get a, a warm ovation from this Barnsley crowd to show their appreciation for Alex Liu's efforts. Yeah, 198 on the first game was uh, below par, but uh, he's going to go through the 200 barrier on this game. Unlucky. Well, that's sort of the, the tail of the tape, really, isn't it? That's the end of the game, and uh, he just really hasn't had the carry that he's wanted. One or two errant shots, just as have, hasn't had the carry on those corner things. Just a spare to be made then for Alex Liu to finish his 2008 World Tempin Masters campaign. And for once, Alex Liu is not going to progress further in this competition. He's going to go out in the first round. 4-0-1, his final score. And for a man of his calibre and his consistency of scoring, that's well below par. Paul Moore then to finish the job off. And to get the applause from the home fans. Well, it's not going to happen this time. They're a friendly crowd, Cass, but they're a tough crowd. And if you don't hit the strike, you don't get the, the applause, do you? I think they saw that was a change of ball, change of line. Left himself a big split. Here we go, they're back on side again. It doesn't last long. Oh, good try. Good try from Paul Moore and a good performance. And uh, some of the crowd up on their feet already for this young man. They love Paul Moore here in Barnsley. Alex Liu is his first round victim. And after a slightly shaky start, our three-time finalist, Paul Moore, forces his way through to the quarterfinals. 4.53, it's a fighting performance. We're going to see more of Paul Moore. It was always pretty close in the first game. It was always quite nip and tuck. There were only about 10 pins in it until the 10th. Then the 10th frame, I pulled away a bit. And as I say, the um, second game, early on, it kind of... Um, Seal it really in the end. It's, it's really frustrating for me, but it's bowling, you see. Bowling sometimes it happens. Because only two games, you never know what will happen. The crowd have been great for me the last three years in, in this and, and in and the in Weber Cup as well. So um, I just hopefully just got to repair them and, and try and win this year. Paul Moore back to his winning ways in the Masters. He doesn't often lose, it just happens to coincide with appearances in the final. But after that dominating performance against Alex Liu, the man from Yorkshire can once again dream of Masters glory. More homegrown talent in our next match as Don Barrett takes on Filipino star Biboy Rivera in the PartyCasino.com World 10-Pin Masters.